but every bit counts. And I'm hearing that we're ready to go. So coming up, we've got Tomb Raider 3, The Adventures of Lara Croft by Betsky93. Take it away. Okay, hello, hey, my um, name's Bexie. Yeah, I'm gonna be running, um, yeah, gonna be running Tomb Raider 3 for you, today, <laughs> for you guys today. I'm a little nervous because this game is kind of brutal. It's like death around every corner, but <laughs> hopefully we'll be okay. Um, I have Miss Chelsea joining me as well, uh, keeping me company, so thank you for joining me. Um, um, I'm here hanging out with Bexie uh, for yeah, her thank Tomb Raider 3. So yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the run. I'm just going to jump right into it because it's kind of a long run. Um, so I'll count down and we'll go in three, two, one, start. Okay, um, so we're starting off in jungle with absolutely no context. <laughs> um, this is undoubtedly a Tomb Raider game. You'll see there's already got spikes and boulders on this uh, pretty dangerous descent here. I'm gonna save just in case something goes wrong on the slope. I have died here before. Um, so we are in India right now, and uh, the reason we're here is we're looking for something called the Infada Stone. Um, this first level is incredibly short, so I'm gonna do like a curve jump here, skip this over this slope. You're not really meant to be able to do this, but um, this run is going to be quite glitchy. Um, so we're going to dive into this gate and hold action and that triggers the end of the level. So that's level one over with. Uh, level two is a little longer. This one's about 10 minutes long. Um, up there is one of my least favorite levels, but we'll get it out of the way. Um, so Temple Ruins is um, really long because there's two doors in particular that we have not found a way to skip um, and there's going to be like five different keys that we need to collect along the way so um, unfortunately it would be really nice if we could skip these doors but um, as far as we know they're impenetrable so this is going to take me a while to get through this one um, and what I was doing there was a what was called a perpetual flare cancel. So something in this game called flare cancelling, which cancels a stumble animation if I throw a flare mid-fall. Um, if you hold the flare button as you're getting up from a crouch, then Lara can do that uh, indefinitely, uh, which is quite a handy trick for cancelling all those stumbles. You're going to see me doing that quite a lot throughout the run. And now we're just gonna wade through some quicksand for a little bit. I find it, I like this level. I don't mind, I don't hate it, but um, it is, uh, there's not too many interesting glitches in this level. Um, so there's not too much to explain really, but I'll try and do my best. Um, at the beginning here as well, you're gonna notice that I'm gonna shoot this monkey. And there's a reason that I'm doing that. The monkeys are not uh, super vicious. They will bite at my ankles if I stand around for too long, but um, the reason we want to kill the monkeys, oh my God, that pixel of health, um, <laughs> is because we need to uh, have no active enemies on the map for a glitch later on. So I need to get rid of these for now. But yeah, you'll notice this um, this level or this game is just full of death traps everywhere. It's really scary. <laughs> they really amped up the difficulty in Tomb Raider 3, I feel like. I don't know how familiar you are with Tomb Raider, Miss Chelsea. I enjoy you played many. Um, watching the speedruns. Yeah. I love, love the speedruns, but this one seems particularly difficult. It is. I find it pretty difficult. It's a really fun run, though. There are some really fun glitches in this run. Um, but I have to say, this is not my favorite level. I think I've said that like three times already. But <laughs> is it just because that there's not nothing like really interesting? It's just interesting? so long. Like a, a lot of the levels in Tomb Raider, you just skip by super fast, and there's some cool glitches along the way. But this one, this one has a couple cool glitches. Um, 
that underwater bug I just did to skip the trapdoors kind of cool, but it doesn't save that much time because we still need to collect all these keys. How did you get into uh, running Tomb Raider? Um, so I started off with Resident Evil speedrunning. Um, and I ran a bunch of different Resident Evil games and eventually um, they got a little boring. I still enjoy running Resident Evil. I think the series is great, but I wanted a new challenge. So I tried Tomb Raider 1 and um, yeah, I went from there really. I, I just find the runs really fun. The glitches are super fun to pull off most of the time. Some of them are quite difficult, but um, for the most part, actually glitched is a lot easier than glitchless, I would say, because you skip a lot of really tricky platforming that you would have to do in glitchless. And it sort of looks more impressive. It absolutely looks um, way cool. <laughs> yeah, it's, it looks a lot cooler than glitchless, but actually glitchless is quite a lot harder. Um, so those are the last two monkeys I needed to kill. What I did though was I dropped a flare on that particular tile, and if I embed Lara into this wall here, um, the game's gonna think that the flare is Lara, and that's gonna um, allow us to skip a trigger that would um, unfill a pool in the next room. Um, and we need that room to be filled with water, because you'll see in a second there's an le underwater lever that Lara, for some reason, cannot pull <laughs> without water in it. It makes absolutely no sense, but Tomb Raider logic. So this is the pool. So we need to be able to pull this lever. It, it totally looks like you should be able to pull it <laughs> without the water in there, but you can't. And then we can collect the second key for that gate. I have to um, be quite mindful to save quite often when I run this game because there's a lot that can go wrong. <laughs> so I'll try and remember. This quite angry Shiva statue is going to try and kill me here. Okay, I want to be careful in this room. There's going to be a descending spike ceiling, which we're going to see multiple times in this game. They love the descending spike walls in Tomb Raider 3. Um, and here I'm going to do a setup for a roll corner bug. We have to be at a 45 degree angle here, but if I've got this set up right, it should be easy. There we go, so that takes us up to these levers. And I'm gonna grab this health crystal here. Um, I should just point out that the health crystals are, um, on the console versions, they are save crystals, so you would collect them. And uh, they are um, not infinite. You collect a certain amount of save crystals, so you can use them where you want. On PC though, we can just save wherever we want. So they instead function as health crystals and they give us back half our health if we run into one. So they're pretty nice. And here we're just gonna shoot two of these Shiva statues. They're holding, they have a lot of scimitars that we need. We need two of them. So one from this guy and one from this guy to put in the statue that's up to our left. I don't know why they're so angry though. <laughs> they're stomping around. Oh, pick it up, Lara. Sidestep the wrong way. Oh my God. <laughs> what am I doing? Okay, so the scimitars go in this statue. Weirdly, even though they're not labeled right and left, you have to choose this one first for the left side and the other one for the right. Okay, 
and do another floor cancel and we're coming up to the end of the level we just need two more keys and then we should be out um, so there are two new features in this game this game functions pretty much on the same engine as Tomb Raider 2 except for the fact that it has two new mechanics um, so we can sprint in this game which you can't do in Tomb Raider 2 and we can also crouch and crawl in this game um, and so sprinting is the fastest way to get around so in Tomb Raider 1 and 2 running and jumping is the fastest way but in this sprinting is quite a nice mechanic and uh, crouching also allows us to do corner bugs um, which you can do in the previous two games but it allows us to do them pretty easily quite a bit more easily than in the previous ones so that's also quite nice uh, just ignore that random guy floated with a hole in his chest. <laughs> I don't know what ha I can't remember what happened to him. I know there's a boss at the end of the jungle section called Tony, and I think he got really angry and killed that guy for some reason, but <laughs> it's been so long since I played this casually that I don't really remember. Something bad happened to him. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense with the big hole in his chest. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we just need one more key. Um, which is in this weird underwater room with a current that I don't quite understand how the science of this room works. In theory, I don't know how there is an underwater current here, but if we swim against it diagonally, we should avoid it. Um, and if we pull both these levers, it deactivates the mysterious current so that we can pick up this last key. Uh, so many times I've exited this room without picking up the key. Oh, no. <laughs> I've been doing that a lot lately in PB attempts. <laughs> just getting too distracted. You just want to get out of this area so fast. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I do. <laughs> I like getting out of this level. It's not a bad level. It's just, I guess I've reset a lot. And because it's right at the beginning it, and it's so long, it just gets really annoying. Um, so right at the start of the Ganges, you'll see there's a quad bike there. We're not going to go in the quad bike. Um, so actually this water is incredibly deadly. We're not really meant to be swimming in it. Um, if you don't die to the piranhas, you're going to die to just drowning because there's no way to get out of the water. Um, fortunately, because this is glitched, we can glitch our way out and it's way faster than um, the quad bike route. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to try not to take too much damage from the piranhas as I do this though. I'm going to save here, because if I mess this up, then it's rip. <laughs> um, so I'm going to use the current here to push me against this wall and do a corner bug that teleports me up here. And then we're going to straight after do another glitch that is going to teleport us over this uh, ramp. And yeah, and then we're going to heal because we are going to take some more fall damage later on. I need to make sure that I'm full health for that. Um, and again, here we're not really meant to be on foot. This whole level you're meant to be riding that quad bike. But, oops, I need to go over here. But since we don't have the quad bike, we're going to find our own little way to get around. So I'm going to do a setup here that allows us to do quite a tight curve jump. Um, which is definitely not dev intended. But it's also not really a glitch. So I'm going to save in case this doesn't work, but it should. And, um, and then we can go right to the end of the level, which is just over here. Oops. So here's where we're going to take the pretty big amount of fall damage. So I need to make sure I'm full health. And that's jungle almost done. There's just one more level in jungle. So this is Caves of Kalia. This is the boss level. So this is where we get the big showdown with Tony, the guy who made that hole in the guy's chest <laughs> in the temple ruins. Um, he's a bit of a pushover, is Tony. He's not too difficult. Um, we just got to get past this maze first. Uh, 
Um, and here's where we're really going to be trying to use the sprint mechanic um, and not bonk too many walls <laughs> on my way around. If I bump into the walls as I'm running, then I can sort of get a little boost off of them. Um, that wasn't... Oh, okay. I was going to say that wasn't too bad and then I <laughs> messed up at the end. <laughs> that was okay, though. Um, there is another mechanic in this game, which is getting poisoned. I think this is the first game that you can get poisoned in in Tomb Raider. I did get poisoned by those snakes, but we should be okay. Um, it's going to slowly deplete our health bar, and if it does go down to zero, then we will die. But there is a health crystal right here, so... Yeah, we're fine. And this is the big showdown with Tony. I'm excited to see Tony. <laughs> it's a very intense fight. Um, so since this is the Japanese version, um, I believe, I think it's weapons do double damage, bosses maybe have half health. It means that they die really quickly. Um, if you were to play the European or the American version, you'd want to be using the grenade launcher there, but Tony just dies pretty quickly to pistols on this version. Which is why we're using the Japanese version. Um, and this level is slightly less linear, so there are five different chapters. Uh, we always start with jungle and we always end with Antarctica. But there are three areas in the middle uh, that you can choose where to go. So there's Nevada, London, and South Pacific. Um, we pretty much always want to go to Nevada first because the second Nevada level, we're going to get all of our weapons taken away um, and health packs and stuff. So we want to just get that level out of the way and then we can collect and hoard everything for the last few levels after that. I'm just going to do like a little underwater corner book here. And then um, the main purpose of this level is to get a key to blow up this detonator. And that reveals a path um, upwards. Um, now, this skip used to be really difficult. It used to be like a really complex uh, flicker. But since the discovery of Quop, we can just do this. So I'm going to jump here, which activates the Quop state. And then we're going to do a backwards Quop into the corner here. Oh and that teleports us up. <laughs> I know, it's really weird. Um, yeah, that teleports us up there, so we didn't need to blow up the TNT at all. Um, the co-op is, if you haven't seen any other Tomb Raider runs, the co-op is named after the ben Bennett Foddy game because she sort of does the same pose when she's skating on the ground. Um, and that was a backwards co-op, which we call a palk. Um, and here, you would normally drive over this in a quad bike. We don't have the quad bike, so we're going to grab onto this at a specific angle. Tricks the game into thinking that we went over in a quad bike, though. <laughs> and that was the first Nevada level. My cutscene, too. <laughs> I know, it always scares people whenever I'm playing this, because that cutscene comes on really loud all of a sudden. But yeah, so Lara was crashing into the high security compound um, and she got captured. So this is why we lose all our weapons. Um, I'm just going to save here because this guy, sometimes you can get stuck on him when you're crouching under here. Oh, we didn't get stuck, which is good. I also like the little outfit changes that Lara goes through in all the different chapters. I really like this outfit with the blue camo pants. I think it's quite cool. Um, but yeah, so we don't have any weapons at the beginning of this level. I think all we have to our name is uh, one small health kit, which is not great. Um, the intended way to do this level is to um, open up the cells that the inmates are in and have the inmates beat up the guards <laughs> for us. Um, there is one segment where we're going to do that, and that you'll see how janky the AI is, but for now we're going to do a little trick to kill this first guard, which is a little save load um, glitch in a moment. So this guard that's shooting us has a key card that we need. 
Can you not? <laughs> okay, so I'm going to lure him over here and I'm going to wait until he goes past the door. And then as he's doing that, we're going to save and load twice. And you'll notice as I'm doing this a second time that the door is dealing damage to him. Or you won't because you're just looking at load screen. But basically the door closes for a frame every time I save load. And if you do that twice, that deals enough damage to kill him. So it's much more reliable than waiting for the guards. Waiting for the inmates, sorry. The noises they make when they die are really funny as well. <laughs> wow. Okay, and then this room's quite odd. So there's loads of boxes in this room. I guess it's some kind of storage room close to the kitchen. And there's a lever up here that we're going to pull that um, for some reason fills this room with water. I don't know what purpose this serves, but <laughs> um, this allows us to swim over here. Lorecraft. Craft. <laughs> That just well. too yeah, made of things, too yeah. made of logic. I <laughs> don't know why that lever would exist. But... Um, so this segment's kind of difficult. I'm gonna do this the medium difficulty way so that I can hopefully still save load afterwards. Uh, okay, I messed that up, but we should be okay. So now we've got zombie Lara, so I can't enter my inventory at all. Um, we should be okay with this. Um, I have to be really careful in this corner here that I don't go past it because I might trigger a water current later on in the level, which we really don't want to trigger. Um, so I needed to pull that glitch off first try. I really wanted to be able to save for that glitch, but I've practiced it a lot and um, yeah, it's okay. We, we got it first try, which is fortunate. That was, that was cool. That was so cool. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so yeah, the when I jumped through the fan, my plan was to heal as I was doing it so that, uh, oops, I wanna be really careful here that I don't bump in, into these lasers. I'm gonna be really, really careful here because I can't save. Um, yeah, my plan was to heal as I was going through the fan so that I wouldn't die. Um, oh, I keep bumping into this corner. This guard is putting me off. <laughs> Mate, can you go away? Please leave me alone. Okay, there we go. If I bump into those lasers, it sets off these guns up here and they're really deadly. Um, so I wanted to be really careful there. Um, but yeah, because I wasn't able to heal, I died as I was going through the fan and I hit the health crystal at the back of it. And that meant that the game saved me, but the game actually thinks I'm dead. So I can't save or load now until the next level and I can't enter my inventory either, which is okay. Um, there's nothing too bad that could kill us anymore. Oh, they killed them really quickly. Thank you, boys. Um, How close are you to yeah. the end? Um, a couple minutes away from the end of this level, I would say. There's one more thing that could maybe kill me, but <laughs> I should be okay. <laughs> that strat is something that we always do in PB attempts. I was going to go for the medkit strat because it's a little safer and it would allow me to save, but um, we should be okay. Oh, I can't see my health, but we should be pretty close to fully healed now. Yeah, watch out for the lasers, mate. <laughs> I was wondering what killed them. <laughs> yeah, you'll notice that I can't even, because we're in zombie Lara mode, we can't even see uh, the sprint bar or the health uh, bar at all right now. We have to take some fall damage here. And uh, this is where we really didn't want to trigger the current earlier. So when I did that weird corner glitch into the ceiling, um, if I'd have messed that up, we'd have triggered a current here, which would try and pull us into a fan and it would insta-kill us. 
um, but we pulled it off so now we're we're home and dry we're pretty safe now <laughs> i still can't look at my inventory but uh, there's nothing too dangerous going on in the rest of this level it is super sketchy not being able to see my health bar though it's terrifying me <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I can't see. Oh, actually, I want to pick up that small med. Meds are very precious in this run. <laughs> um, you'll notice as well uh, some weird things going on. Like, that wasn't actually a glitch. I think the textures uh, can't really keep up with all the weird stuff we're doing in this run. Um, so you'll see another example of that here. Um, there's going to be no glass window, so we can just run right through this over here. But if we look again, the glass is there now for some reason. The game just gets really confused with all the skips that oh we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Um, and now we're going to be reunited with our pistols. We're actually going to ignore them though, because uh, the game's going to return them to us anyway to the start of the next level. But we are going to pick up the Desert Eagle, which is like the best weapon in the game. It's the only weapon we need, really. Uh, pretty much one shots everything on the Japanese version. Inmates are our friends, we don't want to kill them. Just gonna do a corner book here because this guard up here has something that we need. Um, and yeah, we're really close to the end of this level now. So what's gonna happen at the end of this level is Lara's going to basically hitchhike a ride to Area 51, which is, um, yeah, a, oh, I'm actually going to heal just in case because I can't see my health right now. <laughs> run, Lara, run. Okay, now we're completely safe. So I should be able to see my health again. Okay, good. <laughs> um, so now we're in Area 51. Lara hitched a ride on the back of that van. Um, we're here because there's another piece of... Lara finds out at the end of the jungle that there's actually um, four pieces of um, meteorite crystal. And um, she gets contracted basically to find them all for, I think, a guy called Will... I think it's Willard that contracts her. Um, and so the second piece is in Nevada, in Area 51. Just gonna save in case this guy sets off the laser. Hey. Oh, he did. I'm gonna load that. I meant to get out of my Desert Eagle earlier than that. Okay, now we're safe. This guard's quite funny because as soon as I step on that tile, he stops following me and he turns around. <laughs> I love watching him do that. He's just like, okay, I guess I can't hit you if you're <laughs> pulling a lever. Uh, I'm going to take out this guy as well because he can block me when I'm crouching here. Um, so there's not too much crazy stuff going on this level. We do have to get to... Um, the next piece of the meteorite crystal is in the spaceship in Area 51. So that's where we're trying to get to right now. Um, this part's quite intense. There's a lot of guards that are going to be trying to kill us. So we're going to be losing a lot of health here if I'm not careful. save just in case something goes dreadfully wrong i really like the music here i love what they did with the sort of 
Tomb Raider theme remix. I think it's really cool. Alright. Hey. So in the next room, um, there was like a missile or a rocket that you would need to launch normally. Uh, we're gonna do what is um, affectionately <laughs> referred to as a glitchless glitch, which is actually quite clearly a glitch. Um, it's also a sort of wall bug. So we're gonna embed in the wall here. We're gonna drop out of it, roll. And then once we hear the door open, we're gonna roll up here and the door will just open for us. So that saves us having to uh, fire the missile. Skips a decent chunk of the level. And here we're gonna grab a CD from the sky. Super old school. <laughs> <laughs> when was the last time anyone used a CD? <laughs> oh my gosh, right? All right. Very 90s. Um, so I want to be careful here to avoid this laser because if I run into that, it's pretty deadly. Um, and here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another setup for a quap uh, forward one this time. Uh, pretty long setup, but as long as I do the inputs right, it should work. I'm going to save here so I don't have to do that part of the setup again. And then I'm going to buffer to get into the right spot to trigger it. Um, so now I'm in what is called a quap hold. Um, so I can hold the quap state until Lara jumps. So I'm going to wait a second until I'm in the right spot. Which is somewhere around here. And then I'm going to enter quap. And um, if I hold action at this door, Lara's going to do what is like a quicksand bug. So she's going to sort of warp underneath the door and into the next room. Um, there is an alternate way to get through that door. Um, that door used to be really difficult to skip um, before Quop. But um, yeah, Quop makes it every Tomb Raider's life, Tomb Raider Runner's life, uh, way easier. That skip, um, <laughs> that skip looks so funny. Yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> Cops are great. Cop was discovered uh, kind of recently, within the last couple of years, and it's like literally revolutionized classic Tomb Raider speedrunning. Like, there's so many cops in Tomb Raider games now. They're great, though. Um, and then there's actually no boss at the end of this level. The crystal is just there for us, so we can just pick that up, which is nice. And then we're going to go to London. I'm going to save her just in case I mess up this jump. So the first London level is really short. There's n like no glitches in this level either. Um, and we skip pretty much the entire level by just doing a little curve jump over here. Try this one at home, it's really easy. So we're just going to hold a jump forward and left. And then do a flat cancel here. And the end level trigger should be somewhere over here. And that's the first London level. Oh gosh, <laughs> so fast. It's so quick. <laughs> um, and then we arrive in the uh, an abandoned underground tube station, I guess. Um, this is quite a convoluted level casually, so there's like a ticket machine that we need to get past. And I think uh, casually you need to find like a coin from somewhere and buy a ticket to get past the ticket machine. And it's a really long-winded way. Like, it's really difficult to find a coin <laughs> and a ticket takes forever. It's actually a really long level, casually. Um, but we're going to do, like, a, a weird little trick. So I'm going to save here because I need to use one of these slopes in a moment. Um, and then I'm going to try and avoid these dogs. Go over here. Uh, 
Now, there should be a couple of rats over here that I need to kill because they can get in my way when I do this glitch. Hopefully they don't take too long to show up. Hello. This rat's gonna come as soon as I try and do the setup. I can feel it. Did I kill both of them? Alright, I guess I'll attempt this, but I feel like that rat's gonna ruin my day. <laughs> Alright, so if I set this up at this angle and crouch, and then I load the old save, um, if I ride down this slope and load the save we just made, uh, it's going to put Lara in the skate animation. This is going to allow us to... I knew this rat was going to come over in my day. Oh my <laughs> goodness. <laughs> That's okay. Just do this again. All right, so we'll do that again. So we save the... Load the old save. Um, so that slide in state combined with the crouch and holding walk and forward puts Lara into the skating animation and if we turn her ever so slightly to the right angle she'll just slide right through the ticket machine. Um, slightly awkward way to get past a ticket machine. I wish Lara just <laughs> thought about like going under or over it but we found a way through it so it's fine. <laughs> and that skips a huge huge chunk of this level. Um, and because we did this rather unconventionally, I'm gonna glitch up onto the train caught by a corner bug. And then, uh, that's pretty much it for this level. Now we just need to get to the end level trigger, which is over this way. Is there any, um, was there like a particular reason why you play this, uh, the Japanese version? Um, yeah, so it's mostly to do with the fact that, um, I believe weapons deal double damage okay. and, uh, enemies die faster. I think they have half health, but I can't confirm that. Basically, it's just easier. Okay. So enemies will die faster. Um... So in this run, you only need the Desert Eagle, basically. Oops. There's that spike ceiling again. Ouch. Um, so here I'm going to do a skip that it was the bane of my life for a while. I used to fail this a lot. Um, hopefully I don't fail it too many times now. So I'm going to walk, run, jump into a dive, and that allows us to jump over that barbed wire. Um, you're not really meant to be able to do that, but... Um, my issue with that used to be that sometimes your walk, run, jump can break and Lara will do like five runs before she jumps. Um, and obviously you can't, that jump won't work if that happens. So you have to be quite careful about rolling. If you roll off the edge of a step or something that can break her jump, her walk, run, jump. Um, and the only way to fix it is then to run and, run and jump in an open area. And you don't have an open area there surrounded by barbed wire, so can be a little difficult if that happens, but we nailed it. So I'm First happy try. about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, now we're riding around in this, um, uh, it's called a UPV. I think it's an underwater propulsion vehicle or something like that. Um, it's a bit janky to maneuver, but, and who knew there were alligators beneath London. <laughs> Um, really deadly alligators. Um, you'll notice that I'm like, if I hug the ceiling up here, I can gain little pockets of air, which is quite helpful. Um, so for now I'm going to be doing that and then we're going to glitch out the UPV in a second. Um, this level's pretty annoying casually. Um, since you have to try and it's quite a maze and you have to try and find the pockets of air um because your breath fart oh sugar that was almost really bad okay so if i ride this into the wall and i press circle and square in quick succession so sort of roll and swim it the, tricks the game into thinking that we're not on the upb anymore so you'll notice now that my breath bar has stopped depleting 
um, the game is like really confused at this point and it doesn't know whether we're in water or out of water or on the UPV or what. It just sort of assumes that we're like not on it anymore, I guess, and not in water. Um, as soon as I get off it, our breath bar is going to be depleting again though. So I'll have to do the glitch again when I get on it again. Um, but this is the last lever we need to pull, so... We're almost free of Floodsgate Hell. Um, I don't know why the alligators are so mean in this version. Like, there are crocodiles. I don't know if they're crocodiles or alligators. I'm calling them alligators, but... I'll stick with you. I'll say they're sure alligators whatever. as well. I would <laughs> yeah. We've been calling them crocogators on my stream because <laughs> we just have no idea which one they are. There we go. They're both. Um, the, yeah, <laughs> just go with both. Mutants. <laughs> Um, but there are um, there are crocodiles in Tomb Raider 1 and they're nowhere near as, as bad as that. These ones are really mean. Um, but yeah, so <laughs> glitching out the UPV, because the game is so confused, again, it doesn't really know what we're doing. We can just fly it right out of the water, which is quite convenient for us because it allows us to reach the end level, which is up here really easily without having to do any platforming. And then we get to the last level, which is the boss level for London. Um, I have to be quite quick here because I want to line up one of my jumps with um, a little damage boost here. There we go. Um, this is Sophia. Sophia has another piece of the meteorite crystal. Um, and uh, she's actually invulnerable to bullets, I believe. I don't think there's any point in shooting her. What does kill her, though, is this: if we shoot this generator, she is vulnerable to electricity. She doesn't like that. <laughs> um, so that's Sophia gone. And that is the third piece of the crystal. So now we're going to go to the second last segment, which is South Pacific. Um, I have to be really careful here. I am swimming forward purposely to avoid hitting the current in this level. Um, most uh, water segments in Tomb Raider 3 will have some kind of current uh, with some kind of different value. and. Um, if I swim into them, it's going to just change the current uh, throughout each different level that has water. Um, Madubu, which is uh, coming up in a, I think it's the next, in a couple levels, um, is a level where we ride a kayak and we want the current to be consistent in that level so that we can do a setup. And if it's not, it's going to make my life so much more difficult. So hopefully we haven't changed the current value. And everything's going to be just fine. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this level's pretty short. Got to be quite careful here. Again, there's lots of things that are trying to kill me. Going to pick up this med kit. Um, here, if I save load over these spikes, it sort of resets the trigger for them so that they just disappear. And then we can run to the end of this level. Everyone just hates Lara. Everyone's just out to kill Lara. Yeah, what did she do? I don't know. <laughs> well, Lara's no angel, let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so we want to get up onto this treehouse. I'm going to do a flicker bug. So I'm going to embed Lara in the wall and... Um, because she's nowhere to go, she's sort of falling in the wall and it pushes her uh, to the left, which allows us to land on that bridge. That was a really quick flicker as well. If you get a bad angle, she'll do that, but really slowly. Uh, so that was Coastal Village. Um, second level of S South Pacific starts with this big jump. Um, you are given a map, um, which... Uh, paths out the correct tiles to jump on here. So some of them are solid and some of them aren't. Uh, we know which ones to jump on though. I've done this a few times. <laughs> so 
some epic platforming like right that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, uh, yeah, there's also dinosaurs in this level, because why not? Um, there is actually a T-Rex somewhere in this level. We're not going to see it, unfortunately. But I think it's kind of cool that they have T-Rexes in Tomb Raider 1, 2, and 3. And in none of the games does Lara bat an eyelid at dinosaurs <laughs> being not extinct. That's just a normal day for Lara. I mean, everybody else is trying to kill her as well, so just another day yeah. in her life. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to do a setup here. I'm going to save just in case this goes wrong. Normally you would, um, there would be like a section here where we shoot a bunch of dinosaurs with a cannon and then we shoot out this wall um, over here and that takes us to the next level. But we can just glitch right through it instead. And this is Madubu. This is... Um, pretty deadly level straight away here we're gonna do quite a scary jump and um you'll notice that this sort of <laughs> really fast flowing water um it is really deadly uh Lara's pinky toe touches it she'll die oh my <laughs> it's that scary <laughs> yeah so I want to be really careful not to fall in it I also want to be careful jumping over it that I don't do any weird movements because that can also affect the current value for when I'm in the kayak. Um, if I do everything right, it should be fine. Um, so you'll know if you've ever played Tomb Raider 3, but you'll probably also know from just looking at it that the kayak is incredibly janky. Um, we do have a consistent setup for it, so I am going to be counting every single move here, so I'm just going to show up while I ride this kayak. Um, it should look smooth, but yeah, I can't mess up one move or it's all going to go I'm wrong. I'm also going to give you some quiet time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. So that should have worked. So if I did that sequence right, um, we are able to park on this rock here. Um, and we can come back to this kayak later. Um, I don't even know what the intended route is for Madubu. The kayak is really insanely awkward to maneuver and it also, how it maneuvers um, changes depending on uh, the current value as well. So. That's why we were, it was so important that we kept the current a consistent value so that we could do that setup. It's called setup hell because every single move is accounted for. Um, but it's really nice to not have to YOLO that sequence. Um, and then we just have to do a little sequence here to uh, pull a lever and then we can get back in the kayak and get out of Madubu hell. Um, but yeah, if there's anything to read or any donations or anything, this is a great time because there's not too much going on here. Sure thing. We got a couple of donations. Wishing you good luck, Betsky. Uh, from Insomnia Chicken, a $25 donation. Good luck on the Tomb Raider run. These got me into speedruns and watching GDQ. I know Betsky will nail it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> we have a $50 donation from Rachel Seven. Tomb Raider 3 hype? Good luck on the run, Bex, and <laughs> let's get that disco outfit for Nemesis. Oh, yeah, thank you so much, Rachel. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate that. And we do have an incentive coming up for Bex's second run later tonight for Resident Evil 3 Nemesis, where you get to choose your outfit. So get your donations in if you want a choice in what Jill will wear. Yeah, I'm... I'm <laughs> I really want to wear the disco suit, because that's my favorite. <laughs> but I'm happy to wear whatever. There's some really cool outfits in RE3. Disco suit is the best though. <laughs> I'm on board for the disco suit um. as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just so cool. Um, 
All right, so now we've pulled that lever, we can try and get back in the kayak. Uh, and then I'm going to do another little sequence here where I'm counting all my steps. Um, and then we have to do this quite scary drop, uh, which is force damage. And uh, yeah, it, <laughs> it's a pretty awkward moment for anyone who does no loads, no meds. Um, because you take loads of damage there and then you have these alligator or crocogators, <laughs> so we were calling them <laughs> right at the bottom, who are like, hold on a minute. You ain't going nowhere, trying to bite my leg off. Uh, sometimes they can stop us from climbing up here as well. They'll push us right back into the water, but we got lucky there. Um, so then this is the final level of South Pacific. Uh, we have these guys at the beginning who are relatively harmless. They're just shooting poison darts at me, but I'm not too worried about that. I have to get really lucky though, I feel like, to not get poisoned. How long does the poison last um, for? Um, so poison lasts until you die, um, unless you heal. As soon as you use a med pack, the poison goes away. Um, but I'm gonna wait to try and grab that health crystal there, so I'm not wasting a med pack. Uh, this room's a little scary. It's sort of one touch of this spinny wheel, and we're, we're, we're dead. Oh my god. <laughs> so I've got to be quite careful. I miss the crystals, so I'll probably just use a small med instead. I don't know who created this contraption or why, but... <laughs> and then there's another uh, descending spike ceiling in this room, so we've got to be quite quick at pulling these sleepers. This room's pretty brutal, honestly. Even if you're not speedrunning, you have to be really quick in this room because you can see the spikes are already almost touching Lara. And that wasn't dawdling the suspicious uh, boulder above this lever as well. This game's just full of death traps everywhere. Yep, there it is. And there's another one. Okay, so this is the, we're coming up to the boss at the end of this level who has the final uh, piece of meteorite crystal that we want to collect. I'm going to save here just in case I fail this because this is the one hit kill. But he should die pretty quickly, he only takes five shots with a desert eagle. And then we are on to the last segment of the run which is Antarctica. Um, so, like I said earlier, we always start in jungle and we always end in Antarctica. Um, and I'm going to make a save here. I'm actually going to quickly make a couple saves here because I need to make sure that I have a save for later on um, to do a credits walk. Um, so I'm going to have to use the coordinates at the beginning of Antarctica to do that. And I'll talk more about that later. But yeah, I just want to make sure that I have a save for here. Um, so we're back in Antarctica, basically. The guy that contracted us to uh, search for all of the meteorite crystals is here. Um, and we are going to try and take them to him now. Um, there's also this new mechanic, which is the freezometer in the top left. Uh, we can just completely cheese that by saving and loading, and it resets the bar every time I load. So no worries about that. It does deplete really quickly, though. So I have to do this quite often. It's such a cheese strat. What's the alter? I mean, is it... Would you have to come up for air, or like, what would be the alternative to that? Um, so you're not... I think you're actually meant to ride around this level in, like, a rubber dinghy. Mm. 
Um, you're not really meant to touch the water at all. I think there's like some flares underwater, which are really not worth getting. Um, yeah, other than that, you are meant to really avoid the water at all costs. The water is so deadly in this run. Um, I'm gonna do a flicker. You're not really meant to go up here either, but we can do some glitchy magic and get up there a bit earlier than we were meant to. Um, and go to the end of the level, which is over this way. And Lara has a bunch of enemies here. I don't even know, I don't know who these guys are or why they're shooting at me. Because <laughs> I'm helping out Willard. So these are Willard's men, I don't know why they're shooting. Uh, basically what happens here though, is this is the guy that asked us to get the crystals. Now we find out that he's up to some dodgy stuff. Um, and basically he steals the crystals and runs off with them. So now we're like trying to find out what he's up to. Uh, I'm going to drop a flare there. I'm going to do something similar here to what I did in um, in Temple Ruins at the beginning. So I'm going to trick the game into thinking that Lara is on the tile where the flare is. And this is going to allow me to skip this little gate puzzle that's going on. Uh, this is the longest level in the game. This is slightly longer even than Temple Ruins. The well, Temple Ruins was about 10 minutes. This is probably somewhere around 12. And uh, it's another one of those levels that just has a door that we just have not found a way to skip. <laughs> Otherwise, it would be super short. There's kind of some weird stuff going on in this level as well. Some mutant uh, creatures, which are... I believe scientists who were studying the meteorite uh, crystals and they've just mutated because the crystal does weird stuff to people. And they can also shoot poison at us as well. So we've got to be quite careful around those. The, um, the guys in the white suits will try and kill the mutants. Um, they're not trying to kill us, but if we run into the flamethrower, they don't care. <laughs> They'll kill us in a heartbeat. You have to be quite careful of avoiding the flamethrowers as well. And um, yeah, there's not much to say about the minecart. The minecart kind of rides itself. At one point here, I do have to slow her down so she doesn't derail. But other than that, uh, minecart pretty much just does its own thing. And I want to stop her here. So I can just... Oh, okay. <laughs> that guy was stood in my way, so I couldn't dive past the screws. Great. There we go. <laughs> that guy almost got me killed. Okay, I'm going to save Hex is quite a big drop if I roll the wrong way down it. Um, so here we're just going to do a little bit of platforming. Our aim in this level is to um, grab three key items. So we need a crowbar, um, a witch starter, and a battery. Um, and they're all pretty spread out, so that's why this level's so long. Uh, do a little setup there to get down here safely. And let's see what our med pack situation's like. We're doing okay. We don't really need to use too many meds in this level. So the first item's over here, which is the crowbar, and that's going to allow us to get the battery later on. Would have been nice if I couldn't get poison there, but... It's okay. There's quite a tight platforming sequence here. Oh, barely made it. Um, and this uh, jump here is quite deadly if I do it wrong, but if I do it right, it's fine. So I'm gonna save just in case. 
As long as I hold jump before I hold a direction, the drills here shouldn't hurt me too much. And then, yeah, there's all this random machinery that I don't know what it does. We gotta try and avoid it. Because it will kill us. How long have you been speedrunning this game? Um, I think two or three years on and off. I, um, usually what happens to me with this game is I get a PB okay. and then I, <laughs> I take like half a year off it because, um, I found this game quite intense to run. A lot of really stupid stuff has killed my runs in the past, so I, whenever I PB, I'm like, right, okay, I need a break now. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I learned this a couple of years ago, I think, two or three years ago. Um, so for this bit here, we're going to do another flicker bug. Um, so we want to get across this pit. And the easiest way for us to do this is to embed in this wall. Um, so if we do a little setup, we should get it to work. Um, and Lara's going to just wall hump for a while. Once I hit the right angle. So she's just going to do this for a while until we make it across to the other end. Um, I don't know if I explained properly earlier, but the flicker is basically when you embed in the wall and there's nowhere above for Lara to sort of come out, so there's no effort to pop out, she will just fall in the wall. Um, and we can uh, use this to move in certain directions in an embed. And so that's what allows us to get across that cavern there. Um. But yeah, again, there's not too much to talk about in this level. If there's anything else to read, any more donations or any questions or anything, this is a great time. Sure. We've got a $5 donation from Bard Eats. Good luck on your run, Bexky. May the shambles gods be with you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Bard Eats. Uh, Library Nerd sends a $25 donation responding to your earlier question about CDs. Uh, they say, CD mixes live on in my car, <laughs> live on in my car. It's mostly 80s power pop and bits from Final Fantasy 8, 9, and 10. Nice, that's awesome. Actually, good point. My, me and my dad do have, um, we still do use CDs in the car. <laughs> that's true. Uh, I've got a $10 donation from Cinex. Hooray to the TR game that made me a fan of the series almost 20 years ago. Hope you guys have a great time. Oh yeah, that's awesome. Thank you so much for those donations. Keep them coming, it's for a really great cause. Really do appreciate it. Um, I really don't know what to say about this level now. If you've got time for another um, donation. Yeah, we, I've got so much time. <laughs> I have a $25 donation from Luma Levy. Thank you GDQ for everything you're doing and good luck for the end of the run. Thank you. Winter Mute yeah, 2. Oh, sorry, oh, go sorry, on. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> no, you go ahead, you go ahead. <laughs> All right, uh, Winter Mute 2 0 sends $25. Watching Tomb Raider 3 makes me feel incredibly old. Good luck. <laughs> yeah. I, um, I played this game quite a bit as a kid, but I know for a fact that I found it really difficult and what I used to do was just level skip once I had had enough of a level. Um, I find this game really difficult casually, but it makes for quite a fun speed game. Um, it's just so, I don't know, they really amped up the difficulty in this one, I feel like, compared to one and two. Uh, I'm going to save load here quickly just to make sure I don't lose any health. Um, so that was the second key item that we need. We now have the winch starter, which we're going to need towards the end of the level. Um, and now we just need to collect the battery and then we can get out of here. Uh, this is kind of bad. Oh, these guys need to get out of my way. I can't push this button while these two are 
bumping up on me. Okay, I'm just gonna load. <laughs> Enemy eye is pretty janky. <laughs> Lara doesn't have any invincibility either when she's performing actions, so if she's picking anything up or pulling a lever or pushing a button, she is... She can die. And she can... Oh, what am I doing right now? Okay, I'm gonna load this one more time. <laughs> My movement was really, really bad there. I need to be quite quick so that these guys don't catch up quite as quickly as they are doing. I'm going to save my sprint. Oh, there we go. We got the button. I'm going to save. <laughs> I have had these guys push me off there before as well. And that's a really deadly drop if you fall down there. Um, so now we're gonna just embed and as we run up, we run up on the upper platform. So sort of teleports us. And then we're gonna perform another flicker bug here. So we're gonna do some more wall humping if I can get the right angle for it. There we go. This is another long one. We just have, basically have to watch <laughs> Lara do her thing until she pops out of the wall. Um, Excuse me, there are um, people in chat asking if you stream on Twitch. I do stream, yeah. I stream um, a lot of speedrunning stuff mainly, mainly Tomb Raider and Resident Evil games. Because they're my favorite. <laughs> And this run is going surprisingly well. We've had a little bit of shambles, but I'm as two way to three runs go, this hasn't been too bad. I'm quite I'm quite happy with how it's gone so far. Um but yeah, when I stream, I normally do make a lot of silly mistakes. Because I'm always just talking about <laughs> rubbish. I don't know. We have fun though. Okay, so we're gonna ride this minecart for the second time. Um, again, this kind of just does its own thing. Um, I am gonna crouch, I'm gonna hold crouch because there are a few items that we need to dodge up here, or a few objects. It's gonna be like a drill and um, some things that you'd have to duck under normally. Uh, but if you just hold crouch the entire way, then yeah, it's pretty easy. And uh, this is why we were collecting the battery in the winch star. It was for this machine over here. Um, and this is what opens the door to get to the end of the level. So I'm going to put the battery in here. And use the winch starter up here. Um, and this is another one of those segments where we're going to be swimming for a long time. So. Um, I am going to be saving and loading along the way just to reset the freeze bar. Um, there are a couple areas where you would be able to um, come up for air and just to warm up a bit. Um, and you can go onto that. I think you can climb onto that. Oops, I forgot to load. It's okay, we saved them. Um, so yeah, I think you can go up onto that yellow vehicle there and recover some um, warmth, I guess, and then uh, and there's another gap over here that where you can do it as well. But we don't need to worry about that. So we've got cheese strats. Cheese strats are faster. Oh yes, they are. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't think I need a med, but I'm gonna pick up this small just because we have none, which is a little sketchy. Um, okay, I'll just climb up here normally. I actually lost a run here once when I was on like, I was like minus a minute and a half. Or oh, it might have been more than that. I was I was on a really good pace and I failed the jump onto the bridge there because I sort of just, I guess I choked. Always and I lost word. about a minute and a half. It was so depressing. Good old platforming games though. Okay, so this is the second last level. 
Um, this level is usually pretty long, but we're going to do quite a big skip. Uh, which I will explain in a moment. Uh, so I'm just going to pull a few levers here to get where we need to go. Um, and if we have any more donations or anything, this is like a great last time to get some in. <laughs> uh, we've got a $50 donation from Anonymous. No comment, but thank you so much for your generosity. Thank you. Okay, so this setup here is going to skip um, a trigger so that we can go straight to the end of the level. I'm going to save. Hopefully this worked. Um, it's a little weird what happens, but I'll explain when we get to it. Um, this is quite a sketchy jump. I'm going to save again here as well. <laughs> this level is quite annoying, casually, because you'll hear in the background there's some wasps coming for me. Um, now, they're not too bad on the Japanese version, but if you were to play the European or the American version, the wasps are quite tough to kill, and they also respawn. So I'm not sure how often they respawn, but it's like you kill one and then a minute later they're back and um, they're really hard to kill just with standard pistols on any other versions. This makes this level infinitely more annoying. Um, but yeah, normally you would have to collect four masks to be able to safely drop down here. But because we did the word sequence, that skipped the trigger for that. So we can just forget about all of that and go on to the final level. Um, so this is Willard. This is why he wanted the uh, meteorite crystals to turn into this big mutant spider. <laughs> I mean, who doesn't want to be a big mutant <laughs> spider, right? Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to try and take him down. We're going to collect all of these crystals, take him back, and we're going to shoot at him. Um, hopefully I've timed this okay. If I haven't, we can cheese it, but... Okay, yeah, we're good. So he takes five Desert Eagle shots each go. Um, and then after we've done this fight, we're going to do a Credits Warp, which might take me a few tries, but we should be able to get it. Okay, get out of my way, Willard. <laughs> this is really scary because if you fail any of these jumps or there are some random slopes that you can accidentally hit and you fall into that lava, then it's insta-kill. You want to be quite careful not to fall into there. Okay, so now Willard should be dead. Um, so normally there would be a bigger sort of escape sequence here. We'd climb up that ladder and we'd escape that way. Um, instead, what we're going to do is a credits warp. So we're going to use that save earlier from the start of Antarctica to warp straight to the credits. Um, slightly weird strap, but we're going to see if we can get it to work. So I'm going to embed Lara into the wall, and this is basically tricking the game into thinking that Lara isn't on the map anymore. When we load Antarctica, um, we're going to swim to an area of the map where the coordinates line up with a meteorite cavern which is somewhere around here. Um, we also are quite reliant on the weather here. Um, this, if the snowflakes fall wrong, then this won't work. So I might have to... Oh, that's time. <laughs> we got it first try. Oh, thank so gosh. <laughs> you were worried. That was awesome. Yeah. I know that skips quite a lot that I didn't know about that skip until recently so that's a good like minute minute and a half of free time save <laughs> so I'm really fortunate to have that um yeah that went that went fairly well I'm happy with that I hope you guys enjoyed the run and um that was such a great run yeah thank you thank you so much for hanging out with me Miss Chelsea I really appreciate it thanks for keeping me company 
um yeah thank you for all the donations guys thank you everyone who watched and hung out in chat um i know a lot of my community would have been hanging out so thank you so much guys and uh yeah i um I will be back later with Resident Evil 3. Um, please bid on the outfit that you would like to see. I really want to wear a disco suit, but I'm happy to wear whatever. <laughs> but disco suit is the one. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you guys for watching. Um, that's it from me for now, I guess. Uh, enjoy the rest of the runs. Thank you so much, Bestie, for that amazing run of Tomb Raider 3. Uh, as a reminder, we do have a lot of incentives coming up. Like Bexky said, Resident Evil 3 has an outfit choice war. Get those donations in if you want to pick up what outfit Jill will wear. And also, in two runs, Beth Squared, a cute little robot puzzler. You get the choice to save or kill the robots. That will determine the ending of our run. Will the robots live or die? That's up to you. Get those donations in so we'll find out. Sure. And just a reminder, we're all here for the Malala Fund. Malala Fund is working for a world where all girls can learn and lead. Malala Fund advocates for resources and policy changes needed to give all girls a secondary education, invests in local education leaders, and amplifies the voices of girls fighting for change. Every little bit counts, and we greatly appreciate your generosity. All right, guys, I'm going to throw it to a quick Twitch ad, and we'll be back in a bit. Hello again, Fleet Fatales. I hope we're all having a great time tonight. Got a few donations here. A $50 donation from Zeal. Less than three, GDQ. And a $5 donation from Gendarm. With one simple word I want all of you in chat to repeat. Hype! Hype! 
And we've got a video from Malala Fun coming up on the importance of education. We're all here for a good cause. So, take it away. Silvia Siqueira Campos, tenho 36 anos. Eu me envolvi no Mirim aos 13 anos de idade. Mirim é uma ONG para defender os direitos de crianças, adolescentes e jovens, com espaço para a juventude e para a criança falar. A gente utiliza, por exemplo, a arte para poder expressar o que a gente sente, então é necessário criar um ambiente seguro para poder falar de si. Algo que eu enfrentei muito é o machismo, por ver uma mulher em espaços onde normalmente estão homens decidindo. Ao defender o direito de meninas, índias, à educação, a gente está defendendo a existência completa desse ser. Várias meninas faltam aula porque precisam ficar com os irmãos ou a irmã menor. De fato, melhorar o acesso de meninas à educação e à educação pública. Dois terços da população recifense mora em morro, em área de periferia. Existe pouca mobilidade na cidade para o acesso à educação, ou é a pé, ou é de bicicleta. Muita gente chega no mirim de forma acanhada, né, tímida. Uma delas ela começou a participar das atividades do Mirim aos quatro anos de idade. E com o passar do tempo, Gardenia se tornou, ela era a mais jovem do grupo, mas é a que mais fala. Ela concedeu entrevista para a rádio, ela tirou foto e apareceu na primeira página do Jornal da Assembleia Legislativa do Estado de Pernambuco. Eu gosto muito da Silva porque ela é divertida, ela ensina, o meu sonho é ser médica. É muito difícil a gente falar de um impacto né, na comunidade, até mesmo porque a gente não consegue chegar a todas as pessoas. Mas a gente pode falar de pequenas mudanças, né? A gente poder mostrar que existe uma organização, um grupo de pessoas que se preocupa com a vida dessa família, dessas crianças, dos e das jovens. A primeira coisa é que a gente saiba que a gente não está só que a gente procure soluções em conjunto. É a gente quem tem que decidir o próprio destino. Que elas vivam. Que elas vejam que o Brasil é o lugar delas. Que elas sintam orgulho de ser quem são. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome back to Fleet Fatale supporting Malala Fund. I'm Zokavun and I'm being your, I'm gonna be your host for the next few runs still. We've got some donations lined up here that I'd like to read to you. A $10 donation from Zenopian. Grateful for such a great event and a great cause. Thank you so much. We've got a $10 donation from Halmar. No comment but every little bit counts. I'd like to remind you all, we do also have some awesome prizes today. We saw from Scent earlier, we've got an amazing holographic Aries print. If you're really into the hot new game, Hades, which we've got a run coming up of, but also a cumulative donation of $100 gets you an awesome Triforce cut from Alexandrite. That looks really awesome. I want it. I bet you want it too. So get those donations in. <laughs> 